to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. To the young evangelist Timothy, Paul said, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 1. We welcome you today to our study of 2 Timothy. As always, today's lesson is being brought to you by individual members and congregations of the Church of Christ. And friend, if you don't have your Bible handy, we want to encourage you to pause for just a moment, locate your Bible, and get it ready as we're going to look to the Word of God for our study of 2 Timothy. The members of the Lord's Church, the Church of Christ in your area, they'd love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly, whether that's Sunday morning for Bible class and worship, Sunday night or Wednesday for Bible study. You would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies, and friend, you will find people there who love God, who are kind and friendly, and more than anything, who want men and women to be saved. And so we want to encourage you to stop by and visit the Church of Christ in your local area. As always, if you've got a Bible question, you'd like to study more on what must I do to be saved, or the church, or worship, or whatever subject it may be, you'll find people in the Lord's Church who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you. Friend, we'd also love to help you in your journey to know God and His will better here at The Gospel of Christ. Check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, they're all available free on our website. Just go to our uh, free media section, download the media request form, or open up the media request form, fill that out. We can send you a free copy of that instantaneously as a digital download or if you need a hard copy, whether it be a CD for listening to or a DVD that you can watch as well, we make those available free of charge. We'll even pay the postage to get that there. Just fill out that form and let us know how you'd like to receive that, and we'll be glad to send that to you. We also want to encourage you to check out our app, available both in the uh, Google Play Store and the Apple Store as well. It's a great way to get updates, notifications, stay up to date with what we're doing, and in our fast-paced world, great way to stay focused on the Word of God through your smartphone as well. And so again, we're so glad that you've joined us for our study of 2 Timothy today. As we mentioned, the main idea that Paul is trying to get across to the young preacher Timothy is that he has got to be strong and stay faithful as a Christian. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He's not saying to Timothy that that strength has to be your own. You've got to stay strong in God's grace. You see, Paul had to learn this, did he not? Paul prayed three times to the Lord that he would remove that, that thorn in the flesh, whatever that physical challenge or difficulty he has was, or that he had was. And do you remember God's response to that? God said, no, my grace is sufficient. Friend, for us to stay focused, to not throw into towel, to not give up, to keep focused on the mission set before us, We've got to stay focused on the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That grace is God's unmerited favor. That grace is when God allows us to receive what we don't deserve. I receive salvation through Jesus, although there's nothing I could do to earn or merit that salvation. And so some of the words that you'll hear throughout the book of 2 Timothy is words like strong, or hardship, face hardship as a good soldier, faithfulness. Paul is trying to motivate Timothy and by default motivate us to never ever give up on the Lord and His cause. 
And so when we hear these words, we're reminded of the importance of being faithful to the Lord and serving Him as a faithful child of God. One of the major lessons that you will hear throughout the book of 2 Timothy is that we have the promise of eternal life in Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 1, Paul talks about this promise of eternal life and then he ties that into the scheme of redemption in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 8 through 10 as well. Look in chapter 1 and I want you to notice what he says beginning in verse number 8. Paul says, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me his prisoner, but share with me in the suffering for the gospel according to the power of God, now notice this, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. But, has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Paul reminds Timothy of this promise, and he, he just so beautifully says that promise was made available before time began. I want you to stop and think about that idea for just a moment. That before time began, before the first second, on the time, clock of time had ever started, God set forth His scheme of redemption. And that scheme was that in Jesus Christ, every man could be saved. You see, 1 Peter 1, verses 18 through 20, knowing that you were not redeemed from your aimless conduct uh, by things uh, 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 of men, but rather with the precious blood of Christ, who as a lamb without spot or blemish was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times or last days for you. God planned to make salvation available before time even started. And the whole point of all of that was bringing His Son into the world to save us and to take away death. Listen to verse 10 again. He has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. What can we take strength in? Not only God's plan, but that death is no longer something I have to live in fear of every day. Jesus, through death, overcame him at the power of death, and listen to this, and released those who all their lifetime we're subject to bondage. Bondage to what? Fear and death. We no longer have to live in fear of death. It's been abolished. It has been defeated. Listen to John 11, verse 24 and 25. At the death of Lazarus, just after he had raised him, Jesus made this powerful statement. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said, he who believes in me, he'll never really die. What are you talking about? Matthew 25, 46, the righteous will go away into eternal life. Friend, there is no denying life is short. James 4, 14. There's no denying that it is appointed a man once to die and then the judgment. Hebrews 9, 27. But the powerful truth is death no longer has dominion over us. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 55 through 57. Oh, death, where is your sting? Paul exalts in the fact that death has been defeated and victory, real victory, is found in Jesus Christ. And so our strength is in God's grace. Our strength is in the promise and plan of salvation in Jesus Christ and the fact that death has so clearly been abolished that we no longer have to stay bound to that. And then Paul will say, with these things in mind, Christians have got to stay focused on God's pattern and God's plan and hold true to it. Look in your Bible, if you would, in 2 Timothy chapter 1. And I want you to notice what Paul says to the young evangelist Timothy in verse 13. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you've heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Friend, that, that message, that plan, that pattern, that scheme of redemption 
Christians have got to hold. That word hold fast means to grab a hold of as tightly and as securely so that it will not slip out of your hands and you will never let it go. That's the idea. Friend, there is a pattern. There is a plan. Hebrews 8 verse 5, In the long ago God said to Moses, See that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mount. The fact that there is a plan, there is a pattern, that God has laid it out, what we must do to be saved, that's a wonderful thing. Jesus has all authority in that plan. Matthew 28, 18. The Word of God reveals that plan to us. It is all truth. John 8, verse 32. And it must not be messed with. We must not add to or take away from the Word of God. Revelation 22, 18 and 19. And friend, I, I, I want us to know that that plan is found in the New Testament and as Christians, this is why Paul will say, you've got to preach the Word. This is why Paul will say, we've got to hold fast to this because the faith has been once for all delivered to the saints. There's, there is not more revelation coming or another plan to save man. This is God's final plan. This is the fulfillment of everything Jude 3 says. And thus, we've got to fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life. 1 Timothy 6, verses 12 following. And so that pattern is what God expects us to hold on to and never, ever give up on. Then I want you to turn your attention to 2 Timothy for just a few moments. And I want you to notice why Paul and how Paul encourages Timothy to be strong and what examples he gives him of his need to have strength. Look in 2 Timothy chapter 2, and I want you to notice beginning in verse number 1 through verse number 6. Paul says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you've heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Now, Paul, what do you mean be strong? You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be the first to partake of the crops. And so as Paul encourages Timothy, to, to, to be strong, to not give up, to, to remain true to the Lord. He uses three illustrations to remind him of that. He says, Tim, Timothy, I want you to be strong and endure hardship like a good soldier. What do you mean a good soldier? A good soldier cannot get caught up in the affairs of this world and be faithful in his ministry. You just can't do that. He's got to stay focused on his mission stay focused on what his orders are, follow his captain. Friend, all of that is so true for Timothy. If you're going to be a good soldier, stay focused on the mission. Don't get caught up in the things that do not love the world or the things of the world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. And then Paul encourages him, just like someone in athletics running a race, you only win the crown if you compete according to the rules. If there is a race and you're running in that race and that race is marked off very specifically, you can't take a detour and cut halfway across and beat everybody at the finish line and somehow think you're gonna win. You've got to compete according to the rules. Friend, there are guidelines. John 12, 48, Jesus said, he who rejects me and does not receive my word has that which judges him. Well, what is it, Lord? The word that I've spoken will judge him in the last day. The pattern, the rules, the doctrine of Christ. You've got to follow that if you're going to be faithful. And then the farmer, hardworking farmer. You've got to work hard. The hardworking farmer is the first partake of the crops. The fruit is there. Uh, the produce is available. There is much benefit for the child of God who works hard. But you've got to stay focused on what's right and true for you to really be what God wants you to be. 
And then I want you to hear the words of the Apostle Paul as he speaks to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 13 through 15, about his need to stay focused on the Word of God. Listen to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and notice what Paul says beginning in verse number 11. This is a faithful saying, Paul says, For if we died with Him, we shall also live with Him. If we endure with Him, we shall also reign with Him. If we deny Him, He also will deny us. If we are faithless, He remains faithful. He cannot deny Himself. And then Paul says, Remind them of these things. Charge them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Friend, as you think about this idea and as we think about the importance of remaining faithful to God, we've got to realize we must stay focused and give our hearts to the word of God. Listen to it again. Study to show yourself approved unto God rightly dividing the word of truth. I've got to have a heart that wants to do what God wants in His word. I need to realize today the Bible is the very word of Almighty God. 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 19 through 21, holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. We have that written word from God in the pages of the Bible today. If I'm going to be a good soldier who competes according to the rules, I've got to know what God's Word says. This is why we want to search the Scriptures daily to see if these things are so. Acts chapter 17, verse number 11. This is why we want to be ready always. 1 Peter 3, 15, and why we want to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. 2 Peter 3, verse 18. Friend, I want you to listen real carefully to me. There's a lot of people who base what they do in worship and religion and for salvation off of what somebody else tells them. Friend, I want to make sure for myself. The command is to study for yourself to make sure you're right with God. Don't believe it because somebody else says it, because we say it, because some religious leader says it. We want to encourage you to search your own Bible. Check in the Scriptures for yourself. Acts 17, 11. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 21. And then as we move into 2 Timothy chapter 3, I want you to realize that there are things that are going to come that, that, that try to take people away from God. Men are described as being lovers of themselves, lovers of money, disobedient to parents, ungrateful. They despise what is good. They're headstrong, lovers of pleasure rather than God. We live in a world where there's a lot of difficulty, a lot of problems, and a lot of things that are just not what they ought to be. But Christians, again, have to rise above that. We've got to do what God wants us to do and stay true to what really matters in this life. Now, don't get me wrong. Is there going to, are there going to be times where we suffer for doing right? Or in the Bible, indeed, says there are. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 12 with me. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse 12. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. In a world where people are lovers of themselves rather than God and disobedient to parents, that whole list of things Paul mentions at the first part of chapter 3, there's no wonder Christians are going to have to suffer, but I've got to realize I'm suffering for something that's worth it. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. And I've got to realize that suffering can have great benefits. James 1, verses 2 and 3, James says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. How can we count it a joy? Because our suffering helps us to realize what's important and what's not. And it helps us to put our focus on Almighty God. Count it all joy 
when you fall into various trials. And friend, as you think about this, and as we think about how important it is to, to stay true to God, let's realize we're doing that, we're following the Bible, because it is the very word out of the mouth of God, which is so profitable for my life and yours. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Paul says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Friend, do we realize exactly what the Bible is? Listen, I want you to uh, understand the terminology we're talking about here. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That word inspiration is a compound word. It's two words that have been put together to make up one word in the New Testament. It is the Greek word theos, which is the word for God, and then the word panoustos, which literally means to exhale or breathe out. And so I want you to think about this one with me for just a moment. The Bible defines inspiration as God exhaling. God breathed out, and on His breath that came out of His mouth was the words of the Bible. All Scripture is given by God breathing out, and it's profitable for life, for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. This book that we call the Bible, this is not a book of good stories or good ideas or, or some things that'd be good to follow, some man's ideas, some uh, Jesus idea, and some God. No, this book is from the very mouth of Almighty God. And my friend, the Bible teaches it's the only way we can know God and be pleasing in His sight. And then I want you to think about 2 Timothy chapter 4 for just a moment. Look in 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I want you to notice what the Bible says about our need to stay true to God and preach His Word. 2 Timothy chapter 4, look at what the Scripture says beginning in verse number 1. Paul says to the young evangelist Timothy, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at His appearing and His kingdom, preach the Word. Be ready in season and out of season, Convince, rebuke, and exhort with all long-suffering and teaching. Why? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, they will turn their ears away from the truth, and be turned aside to fables. But you, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. And so here's Paul's encouragement to the young evangelist Timothy. Preach the Word. Paul, what do you mean by that? Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. Friend, if, we're going to, if people are going to be saved, it's by the gospel, right? Romans chapter 1, 16, the gospel is God's power to save. If people are going to be saved, they've got to receive with meekness the implanted Word which is able to save their soul. James chapter 1, verse number 21. The Bible, the Word of God, the message of Jesus, that's where salvation's found. And Paul says to Timothy, there's a lot of people who've got itching ears. There's a lot of people who want to hear something else that really isn't found in the Bible. Everybody's okay. You can do this and that's all right. You can live in this sin. and that. Wait a minute now. Paul says there's going to be a lot of people with itching ears who want to hear a message that makes them feel good. But Paul says to Timothy, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort. As one gospel preacher says, that means to preach it when they like it and when they don't like it. That means that we've got to hear the message of God, whether it's truth regardless of whether people like that or not. And then to the young evangelist Timothy, Paul pauses for a moment as he is in prison, as he knows his life may be coming to a close. Paul pauses and he thinks about his own life and how he's run the race and he encourages every one of us to do the same. 
Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. Notice what Paul says in verses 6 through 8. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, but not to me only, but to all those who have loved His appearing. Timothy, this is what I've tried to do. This is where I stand. This is what I'm facing. I want you as well to fight the good fight of faith. Run the race. Keep the faith. Why? Because Paul says, there's a crown of righteousness laid up, not only for me, but to all those who've loved His appearing. And so just like Paul encourages the young evangelist Timothy to be strong, to not give up, to stay focused on God and His plan and His pattern, we've got to do the same today. Friend, we ask you, are you a child of God? Have you obeyed the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? You say, obeyed the gospel? What does that mean? Have you heard that Jesus is the way? The truth and the life, no man comes to the Father except by Him, John 14, 6. Are you willing to believe that if you believe with all your heart, Acts chapter 8, verse 37, then friend, you're on the road to salvation. Would you be willing to make the good confession? I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Romans 10, verse 10, Acts 8, 37, Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Would you turn from a life of sin and turn to Jesus in repentance? Acts 3.19, repent and turn that your sins may be blotted out. And friend, would you, to have every sin washed away, would you be immersed in Christ? Acts chapter 2 verse 38, Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. Friend, we're so glad that you've joined us for our study of 2 Timothy. And as always, we want to encourage you to join us next time as we're going to study more from the Almighty Word of God. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your smartphone. This is the Gospel of Christ.